Hi everyone. So <clears throat> we're going to start a, a new chapter here, a new topic, which is topic seven. And it's all about uh, this theory called quantum mechanics, which is a theory that explains how uh, electrons behave in an atom and how, uh, you know, we come to understand the properties of various elements based on their electronic structure, or the structure of the electrons, how the electrons are arranged in the atom. This is actually a fairly, um, it's, a, it's a complex subject and it's actually very complicated to, you know, very, very hard to understand because there's a lot of math behind it. However, given that our class is not, um, you know, a math-based class, you, you're not required to know calculus for this class, um, and you're not even required to, to you know, have a background in uh, pre-calculus, um, it becomes really uh, quite a bit difficult to explain the different concepts of quantum mechanics because we don't have the math to back us up. So what I want to do in this short video is really just to kind of outline the overall, um, you know, organization of this of this topic and how I'm going to present it to you in the next, you know, uh, number of videos so that you understand where we're going with this idea. Even though we don't have the math, hopefully at the end of this chapter or this topic, you have some appreciation for quantum mechanics and uh, understand why we need it in uh, chemistry to understand the reactivity of elements. So um, the, there, there are three major things I want you to keep in mind as we go through the chapter or the topic. Um, and that's how the presentation is going to be organized. The first set of presentation is going to focus on why is quantum mechanics necessary. Uh, another way to ask that question is what uh, were the experimental observations that people uh, or scientists were not able to explain using what we call classical mechanics, which is things like you know Newton's equation and Maxwell's equation for waves. Uh, what what were those observations that made it that we need to come up with a new theory to explain uh, these observations? Okay, so we're going to spend quite a bit of time just talking about these observations. These are your black body radiation, photoelectric effect, atomic emission spectrum, and so on. Um, the next major point I want you to focus on is, uh, you know, what what are the assumptions that that we made when we, um, you know, came up or created this theory called quantum mechanics. What, what is the assumption of the behavior of the electron in the atom? And you'll see that that assumption is something that's really, um, you know, very much uh, against what we understand, um, you know, particles to behave in everyday life. Uh, so as a result, it might be really hard for you to understand it or to accept it to be true, but uh, be aware that, um, you know, there, there has been, you know, countless experiments that uh, support this theory of quantum mechanics, and the theory itself makes a lot of predictions which have been shown to be correct predictions. So, you know, even if you don't believe the theory at this point, just because, you know, maybe the level of math and the level of, you know, the type of analogies I'm presenting to you may not make sense to you. Hopefully it's, you know, you, you, you at least understand that this is, this theory is very uh, strongly backed up by countless number of experiments. And in fact, <clears throat> in the third part of this uh, topic, uh, what I'm going to do is, um, provide, uh, you know, some of those experiments, at least in terms of explaining uh, properties of um, uh, all various elements in the periodic table. So, you know, so in other words, the third part of this is we're going to look at what are the consequences, what are the applications, what are the predictions of quantum mechanics based on the theories of quantum mechanics. And the, the question is, of course, are those predictions uh, matching up with what we observe in real life, um, you know, in, in experimental observation? So here I'm going to switch now to my um, uh, scratch paper here to just kind of give you that schematic that I've been outlining for you. So really what I'm looking at here is I'm, we're going to talk first about all the different experiments that um, 
you know, came before quantum mechanics that made it necessary for us to, uh, you know, create this new theory. And then um, with the additional experiment form electron diffraction, we're going to then talk about what is the theory of quantum mechanics, what are some of the components of the theory of quantum mechanics. And then lastly, we're going to talk about some prediction and explanation of elements in the periodic table. Remember that when uh, the periodic table was originally organized by Mendeleev back in the mid-1800s, uh, you know, there wasn't necessarily a theory that explained why these elements have to be organized that way. Uh, Mendeleev didn't have a theory for it. He just noticed, he just organized the table based on the way that, um, you know, the, the chemical properties and physical properties of these elements. Uh, but it turns out that, um, you know, there's an underlying theory behind it, and that theory is the theory of quantum mechanics uh, as we understand it now, okay? So now going back to the slide again, um, I want to give you just a quick overview of what the topics we're going to be talking about. First, we're going to start with just talking about what is the difference, main difference between quantum and classical mechanics. We'll talk a little bit about properties of light because it's important to understand light in order to understand quantum mechanics. And then we're going to talk about those experiments that precede um, quantum mechanics. What experiments that classical mechanics fail to explain? what ideas came from these experiments and then what are uh, what you know using those ideas what assumptions did we make in quantum mechanics to develop the theory and of course lastly we're going to talk about what are the consequences of these uh, of the theory particularly uh, it, its impact on uh, you know the periodic table explaining how the periodic table is organized okay so I want to start here right away, uh, you know, just to kind of finish off this intro to talk a little bit about something referred to as quantum versus classical mechanics. And we're going to continue this in the next video. But the idea is that, you know, way back uh, uh, before 1900, there had been a lot of uh, theories developed to explain the physical world, right? And Newton, you know, came uh, back in the late 1600s to explain gravity. And basically, from there, he was able to, using his equations, we were able to explain pretty much how something like a particle will behave um, you know, in in uh, in the universe. Okay, so the particle in this case is defined as something with a mass and with uh, a certain velocity. Now, um, you know, about a couple of hundred years later, uh, somebody by the name of Maxwell also came along and uh, was basically able to develop theories to explain behaviors of things that uh, were considered waves. And we'll talk about waves in, in more detail in the next set of videos. But uh, the world, the physics, you know, the physical world is basically divided into things that are particles and things that are waves, okay? Particles are things like, you know, your baseball. Electrons were considered a particle. Waves would be things like light, um, sound, and so on, okay? And so there's uh, equations that were... Um, basically uh, able to explain the behavior of particles and the behavior of waves. And this is what we refer to as classical mechanics. Now, one of the things that distinguishes classical mechanics is that you can make calculations that are exact or deterministic. In other words, I can, if I were to throw a baseball uh, from one location to another, okay, using Newton's equation I can calculate exactly where that baseball is going to land so I have the you know hopefully you can appreciate how powerful that is because if somebody can make exactly the calculation to predict how something what's gonna happen you know that's pretty powerful you can make exact prediction that's the feature that's really kind of the the, the distinguishing feature of classical mechanics you'll see as we go into quantum mechanics that what we learn from quantum mechanics is that, first off, that certain particles, given you know the certain conditions or certain size, behave more like waves uh, in those conditions. Okay, so that's the first kind of uh, you know knowledge that we got out of quantum mechanics. And again, it's something that's completely non-intuitive. It doesn't make sense as far as what we see every day because we never see a particle behaving like a wave in our everyday life. But that's what we see when we're dealing with things like electrons and smaller particles. Um, in addition, we'll also see that waves, things like light, for example, 
turns out to behave in certain experiments like particles. Okay, so that's something that we have to kind of come to terms with. The second um, inform, uh, second piece of information that we got out of quantum mechanics is that if you're dealing with things that are really, really small, subatomic or atomic sized particles, classical mechanics basically failed in terms of explaining how these particles work okay they can't explain their properties they can't explain how they move and so on so only quantum mechanics can so that's the reason why we need this new theory and the last thing that's really kind of also a little hard to uh, you know come to terms with is the idea that quantum mechanics is based on probability so it's non-deterministic Earlier I said that, you know, if I throw a ball, I can know for sure where it's going to land if I'm using classical mechanics. If I were to use quantum mechanics to calculate that same exact trajectory of the ball, if I were to throw a ball here and it lands here, I would not be able to say exactly that it would land here. I would say that it might land here with some probability, like maybe 80% of the time it's going to land here, maybe... 10% of the time is going to land here, 2% of the time is going to land here, and so on. So it's really uh, something that, you know, require probability in order to understand, um, you know, the, the full impact of quantum mechanics. So I'm going to end the introduction video here and continue with this topic again uh, in the next set of videos.